Canada must immediately accept 25,000 Syrian refugees. Justin Trudeau has been a champion for refugees and called on all Canadians to embrace that role. Looks pretty good. South of the border, when Donald Trump started closing the doors to the United States. We only want to admit those into our country who will support our country and love deeply our people. Trudeau doubled down, welcoming newcomers. Now, thousands of Haitians are crossing into Quebec looking for asylum. For more on this, I'm joined by Loli Rico, the president of the Canadian Council for Refugees. Lauren Waldman is a lawyer specializing in immigration and refugee law. And Paul Clark is in Montreal. He is the executive director of Action Refugee Montreal. Let me start with you, Paul. First of all, do you see a difference in the way that refugees or, or these asylum seekers are being treated right now in Canada versus others, say, for example, Syria? And refugees? Well, we have to understand that it's a very different dynamic with the Syrian refugees. We had uh, people who were being sponsored, who were having interviews overseas. Uh, the, the people who are refugee claimants here in Canada are coming in one, one by one, and they're going to have a very short, uh, hopefully, time bef before before they have an adjudication process through the Immigration Refugee Board. So it's it's kind of hard to to equate the two simply because it's a very different process. Let me let me bring this into the equation and Lauren I'll start this off with you. In Quebec there's been a spike in the last two weeks up to 300 people a day according to uh, the union according to the RCMP. I know the figures vary on this but it looks like it's a tripling of where it was this time last year. 300 people a day. Most of of whom are Haitians. Are we on the verge of a crisis? No, absolutely not. Uh, when you think of what happened in Europe, and the memory is still fresh in all of our minds, Germany took in over a million refugee asylum seekers in one year. I mean, the number that we're looking at for 2017 is going to be around 35,000. That's a drop in the bucket. So even if it goes up significantly, compared to the burden that was uh, European countries were seeing last year, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not significant, and it's something that we can easily handle. We had these types of numbers before, in 2000, 2001, before 9-11. They were averaging 30, 35,000 or more claims a year. So we're just getting back to the numbers we had uh, historically at, at the beginning of, of 2000. Okay. Lowly? Yes, it's not a, an influx and we don't need to be worried about it because as uh, Lauren was saying, we have been having that experience. Also, we need to be aware that we, the crisis that is around the world about the movement of refugees. And also one of the things is that this is the moment that the government of Canada can take more leadership about protecting and welcoming refugees, bringing more resettlement refugees, and stop the safe third country agreement in a way that they can see that refugee claimants can come and they can feel protected. Okay, so two suggestions there, taking in more, and did you say stopping the third country, the safe third country agreement? Yes. What would that do? What we'll do is that people doesn't need to come irregular. And what they can do is they can show up at the port of entry at the border and they can claim refugee there and the process will be is slim. Just like the Haitians, many of the Haitians, many of the refugees are doing now on the yes. Quebec border. Okay, Lauren, what do you think of that? Well, the, uh, the difference is the Haitians are not crossing, if they cross legally at a, at a legal port of entry, they're turned back under the third country agreement. So what they're doing is they're crossing illegally not at the official border crossings and so that creates problems because there's no real effective way to, to control the flow. So what Loli is saying is one of the things that could be done is to suspend the, the Safe Third Country Agreement now because it really... The Do you purpose think that's of, a good idea? Yeah, because the purpose of okay. the Safe Third Country Agreement was, look, the U.S. has a fair system, we can send people back to the United States. Well, clearly under Trump, there's a lot of questions about the fairness of the U.S. system, number one. And number two, it was seen as a way of discouraging people from coming. But people now realize that if they, if they can come into Canada like the Haitians who they don't cross at the legal crossings, because if they did, they would be turned back. They cross 
other, at other uh, points uh, illegally into Canada and the RCMP is waiting for them on the other side and they process them. So it makes the processing more difficult and it, there's no okay. purpose to it. So, uh, Paul, let me ask you, what do you think the chances are that the Canadian government would suspend this third-party agreement, safe country agreement? Um, well, I don't think it's particularly high, uh, but much, much as we, we might um, promote, promote that, uh, from, a, from a political perspective, if uh, I'm not certain that the Canadian government wants to say that the American government is not safe. That being said, um, I think the, the Canada's reaction uh, or the federal government's reaction to the people who are coming, and that is where we have uh, RCMP officers who are, are acting in a very compassionate way, in a very balanced way, uh, is, is, is a way for the Canadian government to sort of state, state its will. Lauren, let me ask you, you, because you've been inside senior officials' offices talking about this very issue right now. What do you think the chances are that the Canadian government would ever suspend that agreement? I don't think it's very high no. because I think their concern is that if they suspend it, even more people will come. And I don't believe that that's really the case. I think people are going to come now that they know that there's a way to get around the agreement. They're going to, if they want to come, they can just cross the border uh, through the dead ends in Vermont or wherever. So I don't think the concern is justified, but I'm convinced that uh, having spoken to officials that they're not going to suspend the agreement. So what will they do? What are things that they can do? Well, there's lots of things they can do. First of all, they don't want the system to get backlogged because that creates huge problems from a humanitarian point of view. People have to wait years for decisions. And second, it, it attracts more people. If, you, if the system takes five years to decide a case, more people are going to come because they can stay while their cases are being decided. They need to put more resources into the system. They need to hire more adjudicators. The, the Refugee Board has to become more efficient in how it processes claims. Those are two very important things that have to be done immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about the Haitians in particular, Loli, it looks like many of them, just on the surface of it, without knowing individual cases, but it looks like many of them will not be approved because uh, they are escaping an earthquake, at least that's what some are saying, and not escaping torture, for example. What do you say to that? Well, we as a, uh, NGOs and the community, we cannot decide who is the refugees or no, who will decide is the Immigration and Refugee Board. Mm -hmm. But one uh, we can say is that anyone has the right to come mm -hmm. and be heard mm -hmm. as uh, their case and present the case, and then the adjudicator is the one that who will decide if they meet the criteria for the Convention for Refugee. And, and that's one element. Uh, many Haitians, they were coming before, when they were in the exception because they were not removable and they were meet the criteria of the safe third country agreement and some of them they were accepted and in the other case when the ones that they because they couldn't be removed canada gave another option that was the humanitarian compassion grounds that now how it is the refugee system if they go and they are claiming refugee they are banned after if they are negative decision they will be banned for a year and to apply on their humanitarian compassion grounds. And maybe many of them, they meet that criteria. Maybe what they, mm -hmm. we need to look what is the humanitarian that always we bring in Canada. And that's one of the, the situations that happened with the Haitians. Paul, let me ask you, have you been able to figure out yet what the Haitian officials were doing in Montreal uh, just this past week? Um, that I'll, I'll admit that was a little surprising to me to see the Haitian officials coming in. Uh, that being said, um, I was a basic principle when it comes to asylum seekers, refugee claimants, is confidentiality. And so the fact that people have crossed into Canada, often by foot, um, they, their story is confidential. They, they're going to have a hearing in front of the Immigration Refugee Board, and we certainly need to keep keep their keep them their full story con confidential from 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 the public from other governments etc so we, we just have to make sure that there that there's a confidentiality uh, surrounding all, all their needs um, and I'm not quite sure why why those uh, government officials came okay Lauren do you have any idea why they came 
No idea why they came. It concerns me, obviously, because we uh, th hopefully they're not interfering in the process. And I hope that the government uh, t treats the Haitians with compassion. Many of them may have trouble uh, qualifying as refugees, but there's compelling reasons, the poverty in their country, the horrible situation there, that the government should look very carefully at uh, allowing them to stay on humanitarian grounds. If you say poverty is a legitimate uh, reason for coming into this country to, to become an economic migrant, if you will, or an economic refugee, are you not opening, as some people would suggest the floodgates. Yeah, well, I, I, that's the concern, obviously, that, that we may be opening the floodgates. But I think we now are confronted with a practical situation, that there are uh, people coming into Canada who are, are coming from a country that's impoverished. The people cannot, uh, the, the country cannot uh, support them. And what are we going to do with those people? Uh, the, minister, uh, the mayor of, of Montreal urged the government to, be, uh, to show uh, compassion, and I think that's what we should do. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for now. A topic of discussion, I'm sure, with the numbers of people that are showing up at the borders. This is a conversation that will continue. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today. Thank, thank you. you.